Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Raul Andrews, uh, Regional Vice President for AARP and your Institute Moderator. And it is my humbling privilege to welcome you to the first Aging in D.C. Institute. Uh, what we know, according to the World Health Organization, is that every day, one million people turn 60 years old. According to the American Bar Association, the median age of an attorney in the United States is 49 years of age and climbing. In the District of Columbia, there are well over 110,000 who we would call senior citizens or elders residing in our midst. Technology and all of its advances are increasing our capabilities to serve those in need. At the same time, technology is impressing demands upon us that we've never seen before. People want it faster, they want it cleaner, and they want it yesterday. The caregiving burden for those of us who toil in the vineyards is ever increasing, whether that is caring for an older loved one or caring for younger loved ones. The sandwich generation is besieged and in need of help. And that is why uh, we are so glad to have been able to put this institute together to bring back a multidisciplinary group of subject matter experts not just probate attorneys, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what we've learned, uh, and what we all need to leave here understanding, what used to be considered elder law is everyday law. Because there are 110 million people in the United States who are 50 and older. So what the boomers need, what the greatest generation needs, Gen X will need. The oldest of Gen X are now 52 years of age. And by the end of this decade, believe it or not, millennials, the eldest of millennials is now 35 and rising. So the numbers are not on our side, but it's not a tsunami because we're not surprised by any of these uh, developments in terms of age. But are we prepared? Are we focused? Are we ready to meet this rising tide and these new demands? So uh, what I want to do is bring uh, our chief judge uh, before you. Uh, all of you know of and all of you should know uh, Chief Judge Morin. He's been on the bench of uh, our Superior Court since 1996. Uh, but since 2016, June, he has been our Chief Judge. Uh, he was an exemplar criminal defense attorney before that. Uh, he still makes time uh, for the next generation of attorneys uh, with an adjunct practice uh, as a faculty member at Georgetown Law Center and uh, serves on any host of committees. And, if any of you know anybody interested in being a judge, he reminded me this morning, there's a dearth of judges. And uh, so if we inspire you to do anything else, get prepared and maybe submit your credentials. So without any further ado, let me bring to you our chief judge, Robert Moore. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here uh, at the first Aging Legal Institute. It really is. Uh, this is an important area. Uh, and so I want to thank the DC Bar, uh, President Bob Spagnoletti, and Dennis Sobin. Thank you very much uh, for putting on this particular program. Some of you may not know. Let me just tell you a little bit about Superior Court. Um, we're a court of general jurisdiction. We have five divisions, domestic violence division, family court, civil, criminal, and then probate and tax. Uh, we have about 100,000 cases a year. We have about 10 to 12,000 people a day visiting our buildings. Um, it's a very busy urban court. And it's a court, our goal is to respond to the needs of our community. And the needs are very great. So in addition to the five divisions, we have a number of what we call problem-solving courts, drug court, mental health court. We have hope court for victims of sexual uh, abuse. It's uh, a very diverse court. It's a court I'm very proud to lead. Um, and I want to recognize a couple of the judges here. Uh, Alfred Irving, who's the, he's going to become the presiding judge of the probate division next year. Judge Pittman, where are you? Yes, he's our newest judge, Judge Pittman. 
Uh, I don't know why they're here and not doing work on their calendars, but I'll, I guess I'll talk to them later about that. Um, they should know this stuff. Um, uh, but they're very important members of our probate and tax division. And let me just talk a little bit about that since that's the area you're going to be uh, covering today. It's, um, when I started off in the court, we had two probate judges because that's all we needed. Uh, that was our division, two probate judges. The probate division, probate and tax division, is the fastest growing division in our court, surprisingly. So now we have four judges and a magistrate judge. And the court is down 10 judges. So if I had more judges, I'd probably be putting them in probate. Uh, because it is a ever-growing division in our court with our aging population. And you've heard uh, that we are aging and our community's aging. And we're going to have to start responding to the needs of our community. Uh, so we try to take a comprehensive look at the types of cases that come into that division. Um, just to give you a sense, we have about 3,000 guardianship cases, and we have about 5,000 probate cases. Uh, the guardianship cases, uh, we have the guardianship assistance program made up of social workers. We give reports every six months to see how the ward is doing. Um, we also hold a number of emergency hearings each year, a couple hundred a year, uh, Alfred was telling me, uh, in judge and chambers for emergencies, guardianship. Uh, we have to appoint lawyers in all these cases. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a, in a bit. And each guardian we appoint is subject to a very extensive background check. That's <coughs> what we call triple I check, uh, three different checks. We have annual counts on all the conservators that have to be reviewed by the court. And we employ a lot of licensed social workers to review the status of the ward to make sure that the conditions we've imposed on the guardianship or the conservatorship are appropriate do we still need the guardianship? Should it be terminated? It, we're looking to impose the least restrictive uh, conditions on the guardianship. And then we have a lot of complaints that we have to uh, resolve that are filed by family members about guardians and conservators. It, it is a very busy court, and I know that because uh, judge, before Judge Pittman came on, uh, since we were short so many judges, I had to handle the his calendar, what we call his calendar. So I was doing a lot of guardianships and probate. And I was very glad when he got sworn in and he could take over the calendar. Uh, and the, unlike uh, the other divisions, the nature of these cases, because they are guardianships, they can last for years and decades. So once we open a case, uh, we generally have it for years. And that's why it's a division that is ever growing. Uh, and so we have unique challenges concerning these cases. We're going to try to meet those challenges by recruiting lawyers. Um, we're going to open a probate resource center. We're going to be asking for lawyer volunteers to help us out. Uh, and I, I do want to talk to you a bit about responding to our community's need. Uh, we have a lot of poor people coming into our court. Uh, and we need lawyers that will address their needs. So we need lawyers on our probate panel, on our guardianship panel, uh, helping us giving advice to people. And this is a community rich with experience in this area. And I'm going to ask you to pay it forward. I mean, I, I know the lawyers who do this work. I, my son does this work. Um, it's a pretty lucrative field. Uh, and so we have an obligation to help the people in our community who can't afford it. And that means lawyers stepping up, becoming members of the guardianship panel, uh, and offering their services. Uh, I know it's a big ask, but uh, we're a big legal community in DC. 
and we're a very affluent legal community in D.C. relative to other jurisdictions. So we should be, no, be doing more for the people who need it in our community, including in this area. Uh, and it's a very difficult area to practice in. I understand the demands. Um, you're not always seeing people at their best. Uh, but uh, you have skills that uh, people come into court who don't have lawyers. You'd be able to assist them. So after you get educated here and get your skills up to date, uh, hopefully you'll be calling Judge Irving and uh, offering your services on our panels, apply to our panels so that we can appoint you in cases and uh, we can keep serving the people in need who come before us. So with that, I, I want to again thank the DC Bar uh, for holding this as a very important area. It's so important that we started this process. But I hope it, it just doesn't uh, lead to assisting people in private practice, that you actually use these skills to come down to court, start representing the people who need it. Um, so with that, uh, I, I hope you have a great day. I, I would stay, uh, but unlike apparently my other judges here, I have a calendar to get back to. <laughs> I have to get back to work, uh, so I'm sure they'll give me a full report on the day's activity. Thank you very much for inviting me here.